Toon Squad doesn't give up. If we're going out, we're going out loony. Up the jail. Hi, Jeff. How are you? Very well. How are you, Tim? Very, very good. Thank you. Oh, so, so grateful for you to take some time to chat with Popcorn Podcast today. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. Uh, I might kick off uh, in uh, Space Jam and New Legacy, you voice Bugs Bunny, Sylvester, uh, Yosemite Sam, Fred Flintstone, and Yogi Bear. Simply put, do you have the best job in the world? <laughs> Well, certainly in this movie, I, I sure I sure do. It's pretty cool, Tim, to voice all those classic, iconic characters. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, gosh, absolutely. And what is it that you enjoy most about your uh, line of work, Jeff? Well, you know, especially for this film, Tim, I think that growing up with Bugs Bunny, I mean, that you know, Bugs Bunny, Yogi Bear, Huckleberry, Hound, Fred Flintstone, that was my jam growing up as a kid. So to be like a, like a, like an adult, like, I mean, sometimes I'm the, I still think I'm a kid, but, <laughs> but to grow up and to still have your childhood prolonged and, and to continue these characters, like in a big film like this, this is beyond a dream. I, you never think this was going to happen. Yeah. And how did you get your start in, in voice work, Jeff, right at the beginning, if we can go back there? Let's go. <laughs> Back to late 1967, uh, in early March. Well, you know, really, it was the late 60s, early 70s that I, I would watch, you know, the variety shows and see people like Rich Little, who was like the great impersonator of the day. And of course, Mel Blanc doing, you know, so many hundreds of voices, Bugs Bunny. And, uh, and you know, I, I when I saw them, they were like a magic act. To me, that was like the magician making the rabbit come out of the hat or making somebody disappear. The fact that somebody could change their voice, that was crazy. So I just started to fiddle around with that. I don't think I sounded like anybody. My parents were, you know, moderately encouraging and I kept at it. And by the time I was in high school, I think my voice started to mature a little bit and I maybe started to sound a little bit more like who I was trying to do. So I guess high school is really when it kind of started for me. And now you're delivering that magic for, for many generations to come, the ones now and in the future. It's just brilliant. We hope yeah. everybody will love it. <laughs> now, you've obviously voiced countless Warner Brothers, you know, you Looney Tunes characters over many decades. What was it that excited you about this Space Jam sequel to be involved? Well, this sequel, is, it's, in, its, in a sense, it's not really a sequel. It pays homage to the original film, but it's really a standalone. I mean, the Looney Tunes are still the Looney Tunes and they're loony, but this is a story that's, that's so personal to LeBron James. And, and in many ways, it's really his story. And it's a story about a father and a son that disconnect a little bit and find a way back to each other and to kind of, you know, listening to each other and reconnecting again. And the Looney Tunes is, is kind of a, a gateway, a conduit to them finding finding their way back to each other. So it's really kind of a cool story. Yeah, it has that really beautiful core universal message about doing you and being yourself. And then, you know, that father-son relationship and bringing families back together. It's quite beautiful, actually. You saw the film? Yes, I loved it. It was just it? brilliant. Yeah, a, a nice, nice balance of, you know, happy medium of nostalgia for me, uh, growing up with the original back in the mid nineties, and then, you know, getting excited about the new generation and a Space Jam film for, for kids uh, alike these days. Now, a lot changes over 25 years. How mm -hmm. did you first react to the new 3D animation style of the Looney Tunes? Were you like blown away? How were you feeling? Well, when the trailer uh, debuted on, on YouTube, on, it dropped, I think on April 3rd, I was shocked. I was looking at it like everyone else. I was howling and screaming. And then I was watching other people watch watch the trailer and i was like i was like oh my god people were like oh my god no no 2d 3d at what they're not gonna go there lebron's a car and what oh my god that's great people were like all over the place because you had these diehard fans that only wanted to see like 2d traditional animation and then see the 3d animation and then lebron 
into a cartoon. That didn't happen in the first one where Michael Jordan was a cartoon. So there was a lot of different things going on here, but I think really something for everybody. I got, I got used to it. It took me like a couple of minutes just to, you know, reconfigurate my brain to look at the 3D. And then like, it was kind of, it was interesting. It was like, wow, there are the characters, but it's another dimension. Yeah. So I, I liked it, but it took me a minute to get used to it. So do you watch those uh, reaction videos on YouTube? Do you like that sort of content? <laughs> I love that. I mean, I was like, I was binge watching for like about an hour and a half. I couldn't stop doing it, you know, and then I teared up slightly because there was a father and son and he was talking about how, what it meant to him when he was little watching the original one. So that I think really, honestly, I have to say that got me more excited about anything else because, you know, in the past year in the pandemic, we weren't connecting really like we normally were all under lockdown. Mm -hmm. So to see people, like it's so you know excited about this epic trailer that was really cool it got me so fired up i think it's safe to say that you and the rest of the world went through all sorts of emotions watching that for the very first time <laughs> yeah and you know as as the actors in the film we're not really supposed to talk about anything other than you know whatever it is talking points with no spoilers it's hard enough keeping everything secret and i'm sure you you know to some of the things i'm i'm referring to in the film so you really had to keep like everything really quiet. I mean, it was hard. Now, did the new animation style change anything for how you delivered your voice or prepare for, for the, for the roles that you were playing in this mm. film? I would say no. I think the direction from uh, director Malcolm Lee was magnificent, especially since I didn't get a chance to work with LeBron or any of the other actors. So, I mean, he added a lot of context to it, maybe even more than normally. And he would often read, um, you know, LeBron's lines so that I really had a sense of what was happening in the scene because we don't shoot it, you know, linear necessarily. You know, there's, mm -hmm. there's scenes that are out of sequence that are more or less developed than other scenes. So he was really incredible with, with direction. So that, that really helped a lot. And I don't think I did anything differently. I do remember the sound effect that I made when Bugs Bunny goes from 2D to 3D, you know, I felt, you know, it was, that was like a really cool moment. Like, oh, I get to do that. That's so, so cool. <laughs> After so long playing that character and you find a new voice, something you have to do something different to kind of transition in your character. That would have been fun to find that sound as well, I think. That was fun. We played with a lot of different kind of sound effects because it's something that like he was out of control. I mean, he didn't know how to deal with that moment. So, mm -hmm. you know, we didn't want to make it horrifying or scary, but also a, a little bit jarring, you know, like what, what's happening to me? You know, if, if, if you could put words to that sound effect, it would be like, whoa, oh, my, wait, really? Whoa. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to ask you about the process because obviously A New Legacy is a live action animation hybrid film, but you kind of answered the question. So you didn't get to work with LeBron. You were just very like focused with Malcolm, the director, to find that sort of different unique style and what you needed to deliver in that context. Well, we had several people in the Zoom call. Obviously, Malcolm was, was there. We had Troy Nethercott, our producer, and a script supervisor and a recording engineer. So we always had, you know, multiple people. And then we had um, Spike Brandt, our animation director, who was also so, so important to, to be there. It took us a little bit, I think, to get into the group because none of us were accustomed to Zoom calls. But, you know, after like a couple of, like a month or so, I think we were, we were right on it. And then everybody was joking about like, wow, this is an easy commute, you know, uh, <laughs> I mean, most of us, you know, on the Los Angeles freeways, uh, I don't have to tell you, it's uh, it's a job. <laughs> That's yeah. the real job. I mean, I'm from Sydney and, oh, yeah, peak hour is bad enough. But, yeah, I can only imagine about Los Angeles. Gee, I love lifting the hood on the process of filmmaking, so I find all this so fascinating. I kind of want to ask you what you love most about Bugs Bunny. You've, you've, you've been Bugs Bunny for so long. What can you... Bring it down to one thing. Well, it's true, Doc. I'll bring it down to one fact that I get to have a caratini every day. <laughs> oh, I, uh, think you've, I think you've made my year, honestly. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, just the fact that like I, I, I that that right there, your reaction like that, that does it for me. That that's really cool. The fact that people get a, a kick out of it like that. 
I don't know what, what it doesn't get better than that, you know, or like right. when a child sees me and sees this man, this, this guy, and he, you know, he's this big and it's like, it's true, Doc, I'm a rabbit. All right. And they're like, hoo, hoo, hoo. their eyes, <laughs> like a, the, the eyes pop out of their head, like in the cartoons. Do you have a favorite Bugs Bunny ism? Oh yeah. I have several of them. Um, I think, uh, uh, when Bugs Bunny said, he doesn't often say it, but he said, you know, he's, he says, you know, what a maroon a lot. People know that one, but I like, what a Tara Ragundier. I, I, I love that one, you know? And uh, of course, you know something, Doc? I think I should have taken that left toilet at Albuquerque. Oh, well. And, you know, I mean, there's so many, but yeah. I mean, misdirection is something we could all relate to, right? Oh, I missed the corner. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. This might be an unfair question to ask you, Jeff, but can you possibly tell me what your favorite character you've ever voiced in your career is to date? Hmm. Well, if I would say, I'd say I'd narrow it down to two to three, but I could, I could even maybe say two. I would say uh, Bugs Bunny because it's maybe the longest character I've done, but I would also say it would have to be Fred Flintstone because I've been voicing Fred for, uh, oh boy, let's see. Uh, it'll have to be over 20 years. Yeah, I, I'd have to say the, those two, you know. And of course, let's not forget about Yogi Bear. I'm smarter than the average bear, boo-boo. <laughs> I love Yogi and Fred. And I tell you what, I feel like if I close my eyes, I'm on my couch as a kid watching Saturday morning cartoons. That's where you're taking me right now, Jeff. <laughs> and uh, let's not forget about the, the voice of Bonnie Rubble too. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, I don't want this to end, but Jeff, I do have one final question and thank you so much again for your time. What do you hope audiences will take away from uh, Space Jam, A New Legacy? Well, I'll tell you something. I remember seeing Toy Story and I took my two sons who are now very grown up now and they were like three and five. And I just remember they were just marveled at the first all computer generated film, but yet there was a story there. So as cool as the 3D animation, 2D animation and all the technology in the server verse and all the different IPs, I guess it's really the story and LeBron's son in the film played by Cedric Joe. He does such an amazing job, by the way, he is so special in this film. The relationship that he has with LeBron James, his father, when they reconnect, LeBron finding that way to accept what his son wants to do. And that's kind of the cool thing is the is acceptance and then really owning your own power, your own passion and finding your own way. I mean, I think that's, I mean, everybody wants to be a success at what they're doing. And, and really all you have to do is just love what you do and just do it. I could not agree more, Jeff. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs> this has just been an absolute privilege and take care. Oh, thank you. You too, Tim. Be well. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. See ya. <laughs>